Vampires. They're everywhere. You gotta understand. They're everywhere. Vampires. The Hominus Nocturna. We hunt them, you see. Moving from one city to the next, tracking their migrations. They're hard to kill. They tend to regenerate. One other thing. Buy yourself a gun. There are so many things in this world that are hidden. Things that in your everyday life you never noticed. Mr. Whitman, you are now ready to look into the other side. A side of darkness, of horrors, of things beyond your comprehension. How far are we allowed to go? To fix something that's broken until the remedy is worse than the disease. And she said, With our sword, we will forge new stories. You might see me as weak. Are you here to heal the world or to destroy it? Not exactly. Now, I have heart, blood. No longer needs him. day. There are watchers behind the eyes all over the city. It's complicated. Nice work. Tonight drinks human blood. Blade. I'm sorry. I will follow him. I will grant you the destiny you see. The night is not. I have to try. The night is not a game. It is a hunt. The Daywalker is returning to the big screen as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with True Detective. And Moonlight, one of the best movies ever. Star Mahershala Ali stepping into the role of Eric Brooke, aka Blade, for the latest spin on one of the best vampire movies of the 90 seconds. Many fans will no doubt remember the Blade trilogy starring Wesley Snipes as the titular vampire hunting anti-hero. And yes, he really has been a Marvel Comics character all along. We haven't seen vampires in any Marvel movies yet, but that will probably change once Blade makes his debut in the hope of becoming one of the best MCU characters. Fans are eager to see how Kevin Feige brings him back into the fold. So here's everything we know about the MCU Blade release date. What is the MCU Blade release date? Blade will be released on Friday, February 14th, 2025. This date may change again, friends, so keep your eyes on this guide. Originally, Blade was set to arrive in cinemas as part of Marvel's Phase 5 slate of movies. However, the film encountered production difficulties. Blade lost its director, Basim Tariq, in October 2022, and the project was delayed while Marvel searched and found a new director. It was confirmed in November 2022 that Jan Demange of Top Boy fame would helm it, and True Detective creator Nick Pizzolatto joined the project as a writer in April 2023. Production has been paused in the wake of the 2023 writers' strike, causing another delay until 2025. 
As of August 2023, these strikes are still ongoing, with the actors' strikes no doubt causing further complications. No more delays have been announced as of yet, but with the way things are going, we wouldn't be surprised if another emerged. We'll keep you informed. Who's in the MCU Blade cast? Well, for starters, there's Academy Award winner Mahershala Ali as the titular Daywalker leading the Blade cast, and Horrid Girl Mia Goth. Obviously, this isn't Mahershala Ali's first brush with Marvel, as he previously delivered a stunning performance as Cornell Stokes, aka Cottonmouth, in the Marvel series Luke Cage opposite Alfred Woodard and Mike Coulter. He also voiced Aaron Davis or Prowler in one of the best animated movies ever, Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. So he's no stranger to the world of comics. Joining Ali is legendary star Delroy Lindo, who's best known for working on the best Spike Lee movies throughout his career most recently working with the director on Netflix's Daw Five Bloods. Although it's not clear who Lindo is playing at the moment, his age means he could easily play a new version of Blade's mentor, Abraham Whistler, but that's just speculation at the moment. Meanwhile, British actor Aaron Pierre also has a mystery role in Blade, and there's speculation that 14-year-old Milan Ray will play Blade's daughter. Finally, the star of some of the best horror movies in recent years, Mia Goth, has joined the cast. Here is the MCU Blade cast list. Mahershala Ali is Blade. Delroy Lindo. Mia Goth. Aaron Pierre. Milan Ray. What will the MCU Blade movie be about? Unsurprisingly, Marvel is keeping Blade under wraps for the moment, but its plot will follow Blade, a half-vampire who hunts bloodsuckers. All the newcomers are unfamiliar with Eric Brooks and his origin, as well as those who have previously seen Wesley Snipes' iconic take on the anti-hero. It probably won't be the usual origin movie since Marvel has moved away from the stereotypical format for the superhero genre, but expect some explanation about Blade's mother getting bitten by a vampire while he was still in the womb. Yes, Blade is a half-vampire, and he's made it his personal mission to vanquish vampires from the face of the Earth. He's occasionally gone up against Deacon Frost, Dracula, and even Morbius the Living Vampire. Let's hope Sony doesn't let Jared Leto show up in the MCU because Blade would ensure Morbin time is over. Just a side joke. Is there an MCU Blade trailer? We expect a Blade teaser trailer in late 2024. The movie is currently set to release in February, so we'll likely have a full trailer before January 2025. Moving deeper, it is entirely possible that Blade will actually show up in different projects ahead of his solo film because, let's face it, this is Marvel we're talking about here. After all, he already had a voice cameo at the end of Eternals. Yes, that was Blade's voice speaking to Dane Whitman, Kit Harrington, in the post credit scene of the Chloe Zhao-directed movie. The scene sees the future Black Knight reaching out for his ancestral weapon, the Ebony Blade, as a mysterious voice off-screen says, Are you sure you want to do that, Mr. Whitman? But there is already plenty of excitement about what other known characters he could interact with. Blade might be a solo movie by definition, but Marvel Studios has long operated with ideas of putting established heroes or villains in potential franchise starters. This can be seen with Captain Marvel, Wong, Abomination, Bruce Banner, and Trevor Slattery appearing in Shanghai and The Legend of the Ten Rings or with Nick Fury and Phil Coulson in Captain Marvel. It should be expected that the trend will continue as more MCU characters appear in Blade. Marvel Studios has not announced any such returning MCU stars, but the franchise's vast collection of characters allows for plenty of possibilities. Moon Knight is one of the most popular suggestions for MCU characters who can return in Blade. The interest in seeing Oscar Isaac and Mahershala Ali share the screen grew after the release of Moon Knight Season 1 on Disney+. Plus. The show's ending did not reveal when or where Moon Knight's altars will appear next, but the connection to the supernatural side of Marvel gives him a link to Blade. Having Moon Knight return in this fashion could be Marvel's way of beginning to lay the foundation for a Midnight Suns team. The group is essentially a supernatural Avengers that Moon Knight and Blade have been on in the comics. The MCU character most likely to return in Blade is arguably Black Knight. Kit Harington's Eternals character Dane Whitman began his transformation into a superhero in the Phase 4 movie after obtaining the Ebony Blade. 
However, Eternals post credit scene provided a tease that Black Knight could be in Blade when Eric Brooks' voice is heard asking Dane if he's really ready to pick up the cursed sword. Marvel Studios has surprisingly been coy about whether the assumed crossover will happen. Even if Kit Harrington does not return as Dane, the Black Knight mantle could be introduced through Blade's past and meeting Dane's uncle. Marvel's Blade movie is set to explore the supernatural side of the MCU, and that could mean an appearance by Doctor Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch's character was last seen leaving the main timeline to deal with an incursion in the multiverse, but Doctor Strange is still one of the biggest supernatural characters in the MCU. Doctor Strange being one of the returning MCU characters in Blade would be an opportunity for the film to help tease Blade's place in Phase 5 and the multiverse saga. This could include Strange recruiting him to fight Kang or possibly an even bigger reveal like Blade's story not taking place in the main MCU timeline. Blade's returning MCU characters could also allow one's cameo trend to continue. The MCU's current Sorcerer Supreme has become a fan favorite character in recent years thanks to Benedict Wong's portrayal of him. Wong appeared in four Phase 4 projects as Marvel Studios continued to find fun ways to include him in various stories. If any part of Blade takes place in the present day when Wong is the Sorcerer Supreme, it would make sense for him to appear as the supernatural story unfolds. His job is to protect the universe from supernatural threats, so a likely vampire villain that Blade will have could count and bring him back. Another MCU character who can return in Blade is Werewolf by Night. The Disney Plus special Werewolf by Night was the first step in Marvel's foray into horror, and there are expectations that Blade will continue to deliver a spookier and darker tone. Broad links to the two properties could happen as Mahershala Ali's Daywalker hunts vampires. However, an actual appearance by Werewolf by Night could also work. It would be a chance for Marvel's werewolves and vampires to cross over, and it would provide some much-needed answers to how Werewolf by Night fits into the larger universe. Marvel could bring another supernatural character back for Blade if Man-Thing makes an appearance. The mystical creature debuted in Werewolf by Night, and his debut left viewers intrigued to see more. Man-Thing has been part of the MCU mythology for several years and could have a role to play in the multiverse saga thanks to his connection to the multiverse. Blade might not have many multiverse connections, but it should establish how Eric Brooks fits into the larger universe. Since Man-Thing is confirmed to have been around for a while, his appearance in the Phase 5 movie could form a relationship between him and Blade. There is also the exciting possibility that Elsa Bloodstone could return in Blade. Laura Donnelly's character from Werewolf by Night is one of the world's best monster hunters, as the special proved. Now that she has the powerful Bloodstone in her possession, Elsa would prove to be a valuable ally to Blade as his solo adventure unfolds. This would be an opportunity for the MCU to bring two of the premier vampire hunters together for a crossover. Elsa Bloodstone being in Blade could unite the Marvel monster hunters as they team up to take down a massive threat, like Dracula. She could also help the Midnight Suns build up. Blade also could be an opportunity for the MCU to bring back Agatha Harkness. If the movie is going to be Marvel's opportunity to push the supernatural corner of the franchise further, it could go beyond vampires and other monsters to include sorcery. Her being hundreds of years old allows this to work even if Blade is set in the past. Not only would this be a chance to bring another MCU character back for Blade's movie, but Agatha's role could also come through the Darkhold. The magical book is responsible for creating vampires in the comics, so Agatha having possession of it in the past could explain her appearance. The MCU's Blade appears to still be in the early stages of development in terms of most of its casting, so it's worth examining who could appear in Marvel Studios' Blade and what actors are perfect for the roles. Of all the Multiverse Saga's projects announced and released so far, Blade may be the one that has gone through the most obstacles. It has been delayed, lost its director, and needed to be rewritten from scratch. However, all of Blade's production delays are likely for the better, as Blade's cast is taking shape with interesting actor choices that have plenty of potential within the MCU. Without any solid plot or storyline to guide Blade's cast, the possibilities are almost limitless. So far, Mahershala Ali's inspired casting as the titular Eric Brooks, aka Blade, has been followed by two other casting announcements, Delroy Lindo and Aaron Pierre.
Their roles haven't been confirmed, but Blade's Marvel lore provides some likely options. Likewise, various Marvel comic book characters commonly associated with Eric Brooks could be part of his formal MCU introduction. After Blade's voice cameo in Eternals, all of them played by relevant names in Hollywood. The harder they fall, actor Delroy Lindo often plays stoic and wise, yet intense characters in movies like Da Five Bloods and The Cider House Rules. Lindo shines in villain roles such as Rodney Little in Clockers and Bo Catlett in Get Shorty, but is also capable of showing a kind side. Along with Delroy Lindo's ability to portray the nuanced morale of a mentor figure in Malcolm X, and Crooklyn. This makes him the perfect candidate to play Blade's father, Lucas Cross, whose life crumbles after being wrongly imprisoned and turned into a vampire in an attempt to cure his cancer. Even though he sacrifices his mortality for his son, Lucas Cross also becomes an antagonistic force to Blade. In the comics, he not only forces Blade to give in to his vampiric desires, but also helps Marvel's Dracula come back from the dead. Delroy Lindo could have plenty of material to explore while he walks the line between friend and foe as Eric Brooks' father in the MCU's Blade. The underground railroad actor Aaron Pierre's acting career is just starting, but he already has a few notable roles in his resume. Pierre's commanding presence helps him stand out in Britannia, and old as well as the DC prequel show Krypton. The MCU could give Aaron Pierre more opportunities to showcase his acting chops in a major villain role as Deacon Frost, the evil vampire that infects Blade with vampirism at birth. Previously, Stephen Dorff chewed the scenery in his portrayal of Deacon Frost in 1998's R-rated Blade, but Aaron Pierre could draw inspiration from the source material, an older, more sinister vampire that refuses to stop tormenting Blade throughout his life. In the absence of his real dad, Blade finds a father figure in the vampire hunter Jamal Afari. Afari raised Eric Brooks and shaped his vampire hunting abilities. The ideal casting for this role would be none other than Wesley Snipes, the actor who brought Blade to life on the big screen for the first time in the original Blade trilogy. After his return to big name movies with The Expendables 3 and Dolmite is My Name, Wesley Snipes could pass on the torch to Mahershala Ali's Blade in the MCU by playing his his mentor. He can also get another go at being a vampire in the tragic moment when Dracula infects Jamal Afari, which leads Blade to kill him. Blade isn't the only vampire hunter with a grudge to settle in the Marvel Universe. In the comics, he's joined by prominent fighters such as Frank Drake and Rachel Van Helsing. The latter, a descendant of legendary monster hunter Abraham Van Helsing, swears vengeance on Dracula after he kills her parents. Although Rachel Van Helsing could be a little bit too similar to the recent introduced MCU monster hunter Elsa Bloodstone. The MCU could take advantage of their similar skills and goals to eventually form a team up between both female descendants of two famous Marvel monster hunters. But first, Rachel Van Helsing can be introduced in Blade, portrayed by Sex Education, and Bridgerton star Simone Ashley. In Bridgerton, Simone Ashley's Kate Sharma is a fearless and strong-willed character that aligns with Rachel Van Helsing's personality. In Sex Education, Ashley's Olivia Hanen is a vengeful brat with secret insecurities. In Blade, Simone Ashley could channel both of her breakout roles into Rachel Van Helsing to define the vampire hunter's hatred for vampires and her deep-rooted fear of becoming one of the monsters she loathes. Hannibal King, played by Deadpool star Ryan Reynolds originally, is a standout character in Blade Trinity. But similarly to Stephen Dorff's Deacon Frost, Ryan Reynolds' Hannibal King is much more extravagant than his comic book counterpart. In the comics, Hannibal King is a rather somber private detective who struggles with the temptation of succumbing to his own vampire desires after getting bitten on the job. Hannibal King's no-nonsense attitude, however, is complemented by his charisma and his ability to make the most over-the-top moments seem like a regular occurrence. Stranger Things sensation Joseph Quinn would be a great fit for this role, as his performance as Eddie Munson is a neat package of dramatic, comedic, and action-packed talent in a supernatural setting. 
Quinn can find the right spot between the gloomy comic book Hannibal King and Ryan Reynolds' Weisscracker in order to join Marvel Studios' gallery of unforgettable MCU supporting characters. One of Dracula's many sworn enemies in Marvel is Quincy Harker, the son of Jonathan Harker himself. Quincy takes Rachel Van Helsing as his protege and repeatedly joins forces with other vampire hunters like Blade to wage war on Dracula even though his body constantly takes the toll. The MCU's Blade can cast this role with a major actor such as Brian Cox, who has received many accolades for his performance as Logan Roy in HBO's Succession. Brian Cox has a long list of impressive acting credits that include Agamemnon in Troy, Robert McKee in Adaptation, and William Stryker in Fox's X-Men 2. But Cox's Logan Roy may be the role that aligns most closely with Quincy Harker, an overly ambitious and often self-sabotaging man with plenty of resources who will stop at nothing to get what he wants. This role could add a big name to the MCU's Blade while also giving Brian Cox the freedom to return every once in a while. In terms of ideal castings for future MCU roles, an actor who's difficult to ignore is the boys' lead soup, Anthony Starr, who has already delivered an iconic superhero performance as the Seven's leader Homelander. Starr has fleshed out Homelander's twisted mind on many levels, from letting a whole plane full of passengers die to forcing his own ally to eat his beloved octopus. Needless to say, Anthony Starr could translate Homelander's despicable acts of cruelty to the MCU as Dracula, the vampire that has has ruined countless lives in Marvel Comics. With many horror-inspired characters already joining the MCU in the multiverse saga, Anthony Starr's Dracula could be one of the franchise's major villains, if not the main big bad of the MCU's supernatural corner. Seeing Mahershala Ali's Blade, Gail Garcia Bernal's Werewolf by Night, and Oscar Isaac's Moon Knight teaming up against Anthony Starr's Dracula would be spectacular, and the foundations for such an event could be set up as early as in the potentially Starr studded blade. Well folks, that is all for now.